Hey, uh, welcome to Survival Trek Escape Radio Show. My name is Dan Shrigley. I'm the host of Survival Trek Escape television show and radio talk show. Uh, it's a brief 30-minute platform, and this is how we deliver information out to our fan base about things that relate to the TV show and things that relate to pretty much everything involved with that. And uh, we will also include some minimal discussion about survival techniques and stuff like that that uh, is pertinent. And, and uh, being that we only have 30 minutes here, it's, uh, it's a real brief show. We hope you like it. It's going to come out quite often because 30 minutes is really easy to do here and there. So uh, you could always go into our library and, and pull up an episode and, and, uh, and, and listen in on it. Uh, today, uh, we're going to talk about uh, being lost and found in the wilderness. Uh, we had some technical difficulties. We tried doing a live broadcast. Uh, and then, uh, so now we're just going to go ahead and, and, and uh, finish off the show w- uh, by doing a, a recorded and then, and then try to figure out the technical difficulties later. So if you were following with us live, this is that show, and, uh, and it will follow in, 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 the, in length, and you should just be able to download it and finish listening to it where you left off. But what we want to do is we want to introduce Mars Homeworld's song called Never Quit. Now, Mars Homeworld wrote this song and uh, composed it. It's an instrumental only, no lyrics, for Survival Trek Escapes, sound score and uh is he did a wonderful job he's got some uh didgeridoo and there's some tribal drums some guitar much kind of like my theme song america's survival son which is sung uh by uh frank knight and and uh the, you know musically uh, you know bruce john dickinson from the band little angels out of the united kingdom is uh you know the one who put that all together and got uh frank knight involved and and they're great musicians and uh and so they put a little bit of that song together for me and they did it really in an expedited manner and we were really really happy but right now we want to focus on mars homeworld mars homeworld is uh you know a a a name that is it's just growing like wildfire it's crazy how someone is just exploding and it's because he's so talented and he's in demand and he's a great composer so if you have any projects um that you are looking for to have some really good music put on it this is the guy you might want to go to and so let me give you a sample of what he's capable of doing and uh and then you'll know for yourself firsthand All right, here we go. Mars Homeworld song for Survival Trek Escapes, Never Quit.
Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, that that song is just like I mean, it just moves. It gets right down to you. It makes you want to you know move your body. It's really cool. It pumps me up. Gets my head rocking off the top like instantly. And uh, so uh, anyway, being lost and found in the wilderness. So you find yourself in a, p a position, no matter what in the environment or region is, that you're lost. The first thing you should do when you figure out you're lost is calm yourself down because you're probably going to panic. But that's okay. Panic is normal. Um, but calming yourself down and forcing you to calm yourself down and sitting down and just like breathing deep, let it out. You know, breathe it in, breathe out. Calm yourself because if you freak out, you might cause yourself to catch an injury or you might get yourself more lost than you already were because you're starting to run around panicky and you're going to lose the trailhead that you uh, remembered last noticing that you left. And, you know, and usually when you get lost, it's just because everything looks the same, but you're really not too far away from where you were originally lost at um, and, and your last known point is what I mean. Um, but, uh, but when you get panicky, you really are eliminating the chance of finding that last known point. And so, but that's okay because if you can't find that last known point, that's when you stop, calm yourself down and you start soaking in your environment. You start looking left, right, up, down, and you look for terrain features, you know, major and minor terrain features. And so hilltops, that's a really good terrain feature, a high elevated point. And, uh, you know, bodies of water, if you can get to a, a larger body of water, that's great. You know, just be very careful as you're traversing terrain um, because now you realize you're lost. It's not like you can, if you got hurt, you can, uh, you know, go get to help even if you had to limp your way there because now that you're lost, you're kind of like, you know, hoping that someone comes and finds you. The other thing is when you're really lost and you can't really get around or you're just not that confident in your abilities, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, pretty much planting yourself in somewhere. But before you plant yourself, try to do it in a clearing or an elevated point or an open area as such or, or a, at least a body of water. Uh, so that way uh, you can uh, hydrate yourself a little bit. And, uh, and, and it's really important that when, when you find yourself in a position where you are lost, that you can remember telling somebody, hey, I'm going to be up here at this time today, and I'll be back at this time later today or this time tomorrow. That way, in your head, you have that peace of mind that someone's tracking that you were going to go out. And if you don't come back, they're going to remember what you told them. And so then that guy gives you a little comfort factor that, hey, you know, if I don't come back, at least someone's going to say something and, and then they'll know I'm, I got lost out here because then they'll come out here looking for maybe find your bicycle, your car or your motorcycle or whatever the, uh, the mode of transportation was that got you to where you're at. And then they'll do a search party for you, which is really good uh, within at least 72 hours, I'd hope. So, um, but... Nonetheless, uh, you know, looking for high elevated points is really good for you if you're in a survival situation and because you're lost, you know, it gives you a better advantage point for catching your bearings. You, know, you can look out over the trees and look and see if you can catch something that's familiar to you and then you can, you know, do a, uh, a straight line distance to it the best that you can and find your way back to your known points or, or, or wherever it was, you know, that, that you came from originally. So that's also, you know, just a really critical thing to do. Uh, knowing uh, north, east, south, and west and little tricks and trades of, you know, instantly identifying it. You know, I can tell you north, east, south, and west by watching the sun for about 15 minutes, and I'll just know exactly where north, east, south, and west is, um, or I can tell by looking at the moon. But that's because I have so many years of looking at it, um, you know. But that's, that's, in a, that's in a really... You know that that example is really in a in a perfect situation. What if it was cloud cover? Well, I, I still have kind of a method that I use for cloud cover. Is I, I look for the brightest reflective point in the sky uh, with with cloud cover. Even if it's a stormy day, you can still have sunlight. You know, otherwise, you know, it's, there's going to be some form of light shining through. And so what I do is I, I just watch that 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 form that glow. And I just do an imaginary line down the center of it. And what I do is I always face uh, the path that it's traveling. 
I always turn myself to face that path that the, the sun is traveling. And then I know that when I put my arm out to the, the right, my right arm and I extend it out, that that's always going to be north. And when I extend my left arm out, that's always going to be south. And, and so that's a way to get your bearing. You can also use the watch dial method, the shadow tip or shadow stick method. So, um, you, you know, those are things that you can get onto Google and search. And you can go onto YouTube and pull up videos about that. Um, I know that we're going to be showing uh, some examples of those primitive methods and some modern methods. But the thing about Survival Trek Escape is we will not regurgitate a single technique that's ever been used on any of the other survival shows because it's already been used. Why regurgitate? We're original people. We have original thought and concept. There's a thousand ways you can do one thing, and so and we know that. And and so uh, that's why one confident thing that we can say about our TV show is that everybody's going to always walk away with learning something new uh, every time there's a brand new episode because they're going to have something show to them that has not been done on any of the other shows and we can say that with great confidence uh you know i've been brainchilding you know this uh tv show for quite a while and uh and so i'm really confident that we're going to we're going to deliver what the fans asked me for when i went into the fan base and embedded uh and came out with all the answers that i needed to deliver one of the most anticipated uh television shows of of uh you know the modern era and I'll let you know, Survival Trek Escape is so anticipated globally that um, it's insane. It's like, it's a blessing. And so the the uh, whole reasoning, maybe, if I get asked, like, Dan, why did you build this uh, show? Uh, you know, it's just because I was watching other shows, and some of them I loved. Some of them I saw a little bit of fault in. Um, they all are trying to achieve the same thing, and they want to save lives. Uh, and that's my motivation is I want to save lives. But I want to kind of put more educational content and it get into more detail of why things work, how to explain it, because I think that that's what some of the fans want because they've seen the glitz, the glam, the excitement, the adventure and all that. And we have some of that on Survival Trek Escape. But when we actually go into a topic, we're going to nail it and explain why this works, the science behind stuff, um, and, and not just show you that we know how to do it. We're going to show it to you so you know how to do it because um, it doesn't help me um, in any way unless you learn something. Uh, so that's the big important factor. But hey, I got a, a treat for you. I want to I want to uh, I, I have a, a celebrity star um, country music artist that's a close friend of, uh, of mine. And, uh, and I really want to get her on a record deal. I, I want her to get a record label. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a, a few moments, take a quick little break. We're going to play her song, Restless Soul. Her name is Tori Martin. She's a rising star in Texas, and she's got some stuff she's done in Nashville, and she's, just, she's expanding her name. She's trying to get onto the charts. So um, you can download this song off of iTunes very easily. Type in uh, Tori Martin or the song Restless Soul. It'll pop up. Or you can go to www. Um, ToriMartinOfficial.com or you can find her on my website at uh, www.survivalextreme.net and there's a Tori Martin link that will take you to her website as well but here it is Restless Soul by Tori Martin
That was Tori Martin's Restless Soul. Go to iTunes, download it. She's amazing. She's a personal friend of mine, and we're just trying to get her a record label. So if anybody out there listening or downloading this is, uh, you know, works for a label or has a connection, please pass her name around because she really deserves that, that shot. I mean, she's uh, definitely, uh, you know, one of the number one rising country stars in the, in, in, in the United States right now. So uh, that's Tori Martin, Restless Soul. She uh, wrote me a song called Save Yourself. It's going to be a uh, part of the music score soundtrack for Survival Trek Escape. We're uh, writing to uh, get it recorded. Um, so just be patient and we'll have that up before the TV show even goes to air on the network. Um, I know we're going to be doing something with her later and doing a music video for Survival Trek Escape as well. So look forward to that. That's going to be really cool because we're going to have the act. some of the actors and actresses will be able to participate in the filming of the uh, music video for uh, Save Yourself by Tori Martin and uh, and I will be in the video with her I'm sure but uh, really cool stuff a lot of, a lot of new developments uh, we have brought on Ella uh, Swift um, from Burley Mermaids production uh, and uh, and that's Burley Mermaid Productions and uh, and she's a, a consultant and advisor for me uh, for uh, production and basically she's going to get Survival Trek Escape ready uh, and give it a good workout and, and get it nice and fit and in shape so when we take it to uh, uh, our Discovery Channel portal uh, it gets submitted and they look at it and they love it and so that's what she does uh, she like quality assurance kind of stuff so uh, look up Ella Swift um, if you're in the entertainment business and, uh, and you want some quality work uh, she's definitely going to deliver uh, she's straight up professional. She's knowledgeable. Um, she's a on the ground kind of like boots on the ground type person, um, and uh, she's got a, a tremendous resume that goes outside of just acting and and production. And, and she's been uh, a guest on uh, mine and Travis Johnson's uh, uh, um, blog talk radio station called uh, uh, Survival Talk Northwest, and and she was actually a guest uh, yesterday, last night, I think it was. And uh, she did a great job. We talked about water safety and water hazards and things like that. So getting back to the last point, um, try to have a compass on you. And if you don't, um, you know, you could always uh, do the watch dial method. Any method I talk to you about, if you go to Google or YouTube, you can pretty much search it very easily and pull up what I'm talking about and, and get more of a visual aid. And there's nothing wrong with visual aids. Uh, it's kind of hard to show you anything when we're on the radio, obviously. But if you go and you click on, you know, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, uh, direction orientation uh, watch dial method you, you know you'll pull that kind of stuff up um, you know shooting an azimuth uh, dead reckoning you know, terrain association uh, you know major and minor terrain features uh, and uh, seasonal routes and things like that those are things that you could keyword search and really get a good understanding of land navigation and map reading and if you don't have a map you should learn how to make a patrol map or an on-the-fly treasure map kind of like you know the pirates did many 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 years ago when they were doing buried treasure and stuff but uh you know, if you can track and record a record of what you're doing, it makes it easier for you to uh, recognize features, and then you don't get lost because it's all about being familiar uh, and things like that for you. Um, so anyway, if uh, you know where you're gonna go, it doesn't hurt to pull up a Google Earth and print a Google Earth maps out. You know, and keep that folded up in your pocket in a uh, you know, a Ziploc bag, something to keep it from getting uh, destroyed by either perspiration or water or rain or whatnot. Um, but uh, you can always keep that with you, and that will be a good reference point for you. Um, you can always go to, uh, you know, the ranger station and do, a, uh, you know, a, a, track, a tracking report and so they, they can monitor your movement and where you're going to be at expected times um, on a designated route and stuff. If you're going to go and do some freelance stuff, you know, they're not going to really be able to track you, but I'm, you know, in most state parks on most routes that are hiking routes, uh, if you do a report, you know, they, the rangers send out a ranger and they'll go walk a trail. And so, and they just look for people that might need help or that are dehydrated. That's what they're there for. So it's really good to communicate with the rangers uh, what routes you're going to take, how how far you're going to go down the route, if you're going to do any uh, you know primitive camping or anything like that. So um, it's summertime. Uh, make sure you have sunblock with you. Obviously, uh, you don't want to get caught out for an extended period of time when you're lost and not have sunblock. You also always want to carry a water container with you, uh, one or two, uh, preferably the more the merry, and and always have them full of water when you go out. Um, and uh, and uh, you know keep a, a a light source with you. Uh, you know those ferrule rods are pretty cool. Those fire strikers are pretty cool to have. But nothing's more cool than a big lighter. It's, but unless you you know you're a seasoned uh, you know survival instructor. Um, um, you know, and you, you know, you just totally curse big lighters, but anybody that's got common sense, the easiest way to start a fire is with a lighter. But if that fails you or you need to conserve that for you think you might be in a situation that's long term, you know, use the primitive methods first. And then when it rains or you, they get wet and you can't use them no more, then, then like me and my buddy Travis say, then you go to the modern stuff. Use the primitive first and not the modern. Um, and, and that's where we're different than some other people is, you know, they go straight for the feral rod. I mean, I've only seen, uh, um, uh, you know, some of the survival celebrities from TV shows do a fire plow or a bow drill. Uh, um, and then all of a sudden, they're, from that moment on, they're a feral rod, feral rod, feral rod. It's all about speed. It's all, you know, it looks, it looks pizzazzy. But you know what? There's no educational content value in what they do when they're just using feral rod. Plus, you know, you can't pick up a feral rod and just make it, expect it to, to get it used right. You know, that, that you're going to actually use it correctly. There's still a technique to correctly use that as well. And they don't even get into that very much. You know, there's a certain way you want to use a feral rod. If you get really good at it, you should be able to use it as easy if you strike a match. But, uh, but uh, you know, they don't tell you that. And that's why Survival Trek Escape will tell you that and we're going to get into the science behind things so uh before we end the show i want to um you know, let you hear the theme song one more time for survival trek escape this is written by or uh, written and composed by two gentlemen uh bruce john dickinson and frank knight and you can look them up on uh, on my imdb for survival trek escape that's imdb.com then go to the search bar and type in survival trek escape um or you can even do a sample listen to this off of the www.survivalextreme.net website. But here it is. It's America's Survival Son.
That was America's Survival Son, and that's the theme song for Survival Trek Escape. It's also my theme song, which is really cool because not very many people have a uh, theme song by rock stars, and I do, and uh, and that's pretty neat. So, uh, you know, I feel like Dog the Bounty Hunter with, with Ozzy Osbourne, you know, uh, that, that's a great song. I actually have that on iTunes. Uh, it's a great song. Uh, and uh, Ozzy's one of my favorite uh, vocalists on the planet outside of Tori Martin um, and, uh, and Frank Knight. So, <laughs> but uh, all great talent. And, uh, you know, you just appreciate different arts, you know, and, and different genres of music. There's so much talent out there. But uh, I want to say thank you for joining this 30-minute uh, segment of uh, Survival Trek Escape Talk radio and uh, we're going to keep having more episodes uh, as uh, the time goes on you'll be able to come in and download this is the show that was about lost and found use your common sense if you feel that you're in a position where you're lost always look for the higher ground look for a known point and then from that known point you try to get your references and if you just have to hunker down but stay in an open area let yourself be easy to be found by sight or sound for rescuers when they come looking for you and it might not be a rescue team it could be another group of hikers it could be one hiker so don't be too scared read you know call out for help you know if you can whistle because you can usually whistle louder than you can scream um, for some people uh, you know I can whistle louder than I can scream I think so uh, you know that might be a way you know carry an emergency whistle an all-weather whistle if you need to those are always very handy always very handy so um, but thank you for uh, listening to the show and I'm gonna finish off the last two minutes which is gonna cut her song short but restless soul one more time and she'll do a fade out thank you for listening and this is Tori Martin's fade out of restless soul <laughs> 